remembering that perimeter protection is what keeps an attacker from actually getting anywhere near an asset. Depth protection is what keeps an attacker from getting too close to an asset, even when the perimeter has been breached. What this means in practicality is not just having locks on the front door and back door, or not just having some type of, of access control at the very beginning of a process, but actually having thorough access control throughout a system, meaning things like internal site monitoring, uh, video, watching inside uh, logins or, or having multi-factor logins, having man traps or having uh, one door to get through at the very front of a facility and then having a second door to get to more sensitive assets or a third door that requires even the same authentication or authorization process, but certainly have more than one control because it's very easy for an attacker like you and I to actually slip through a perimeter defense and if the only defense is the perimeter defense, then once we're through that one level of control, which we can generally see from the outside and generally do a pretty good job of, of penetrating, then we've got everything that we need. We've got thorough, unmitigated access, and it's going to be very, very easy for us to continue an attack. The protection layers here are things, as I said, like multi, multi-process authentication or multi-stage authentication, ensuring that the people that need to get into a data center, maybe in the server area, are segregated from the people that don't need to get into the server area by a second authentication or authorization process. Having even further things like locks on vulnerable assets. This is the concept of maybe having, uh, laptops that are actually chained with the little, uh, lock and chain down to a desk. Well, some administrators might think, well, if I've got laptops inside my building and my building is pretty darn secure, it's got a good front door control, good back door control. Um, you know, I've got video cameras around the perimeter, then no one's ever going to steal a laptop from inside my company or from a desk because they can't get in in the first place. Wrong. Once that perimeter has been breached, it's very, very easy for an attacker to just start picking up laptops. So the depth protection concept is even if an attacker gets through the perimeter, they're defeated by having those laptops not possible to pick up. Otherwise, an attacker can simply walk out with an asset or two assets or three assets, or once they're in, they can build a catalog of assets and then walk out with all of it at once. Another concept is this roaming security, whether it's, you know, a, a security guard, probably not a dog so much. They make a mess. Uh, you don't want them running around inside the buildings typically, but roaming security guards that periodically check or ask for identification. This is really critical because an attacker, an ethical hacker is going to be uh, compromised almost certainly when they find out that there's a roaming security guard and they can't just make it through the perimeter and be safe or or be secure and have their time to make this kind of attack. If they're going to get detected during the attack, that's the best time to catch them. And speaking of catching the attacker or the ethical hacker here, detecting during the attack is absolutely critical as well. This is, again, similar concept to perimeter, but instead of just having these cameras and alarms and so forth at the outside or at the boundary of the asset, it's about having these throughout. So having alarm systems on certain internal rooms or doors that might be more sensitive or, or might be more critical to the business. Having occasional doesn't mean every office, every corridor, every you know men's room stall. It means more like having video cameras and video recorders just periodically throughout. So an attacker will know, well, if I get through the perimeter, I'm still going to be monitored and that I could still be attacked or, or compromised very easily. I could still be caught very, very easily. That kind of defense, having not just at the perimeter, but throughout is an amazing defense, both in terms of catching folks and in persuading folks to not or persuading an attacker to not compromise the system. As an ethical hacker, if I look around and I see video cameras at the perimeter, I only really need to shield my face or make sure I'm not seen by the camera once. If I see video cameras inside at every threshold or every corridor, if I see it in key points, it's going to prevent me from moving quite a bit and it's going to really inhibit my attack. I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do or I'm going to have to be really, really crafty. And as bad as the internal defense might be, or as bad as security might be, if 
security cameras catch me stalking around in a black trench coat every five minutes, always hiding my face from a camera, they're probably going to pick up on that, and that's probably going to be something that gets me caught. And when I think of exploiting opportunities in depth security, I tend to think of two different areas. First of all, the very bottom bullet, the perception of physical security as unimportant is extraordinarily common. It's almost universal. I find very, very few companies and organizations where they do an active job or where they take an active role in looking at inside the perimeter security, physical security. I find almost no companies that actually chain laptops to desks when they're either in use or not in use. Uh, virtually no companies chain computers to their desks. Virtually no companies have internal video monitoring or internal alarms unless it's just in the one area, maybe the data center, that kind of thing. Very, very few internal locks or internal access points except for occasional wiring closets. And it's not just that they don't afford it or they don't think about it. It's that they don't really care. The perception is that once the perimeter uh, has really good controls, it is an absolute security. And that's fantastic for an ethical hacker because we can exploit that. We just get through the perimeter and we're golden. The other common flaw and vulnerability that I find is really in the ceiling and the walls and the floors. The concept of having the, the hanging ceiling or the plenum, the internal walls being hollow or drywalled on one side or even on both sides, but not having significant strength in them and certainly having raised floors and server rooms and and actually in a lot of buildings that I've been in where the entire floor is a raised floor because maybe the building used to be an entire data center. These are excellent approaches for an ethical hacker because they allow us to get from an insecure area to a secure area or from a semi-secure area to a more secure area without just walking through the door. Usually the folks that set up the defense for the physical security in this way expect an attacker to simply walk through a door or try to use their their access card 17,000 times until someone finally stops by and arrests them or 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 notes what they're doing but instead an ethical hacker will look at that and say okay well i've got an office a private office over here that's got a raised floor on on uh, underneath it rather and then i can crawl through that raised floor to get into the server room same thing with the plenum. I can go up and over and down into a secure area or into a, an office that has the data that I'm looking for. That's great stuff. Usually it's the ceiling or the floor because they're the least obvious and the easiest to compromise without leaving any traces or even without doing any damage. Sometimes, though, the ethical hacker might need to actually look at the internal walls, maybe going through drywall, maybe uh, taking down a, a cubicle partition or, or a temporary wall partition. These kinds of internal controls, they give the perception of strength. They give the perception of there's some kind of defense between these areas. In reality, they're never there. I see very few buildings where all of the internal walls go all the way up through the plenum to the concrete slab on top or to the roof, and then all the way down through the raised floor to the actual concrete slab floor. Very, very, very in uncommon to see that happen. So that's an excellent way to exploit that, or there's an excellent way to exploit it there. As long as you get through the perimeter, you can pretty much get anywhere in the building you want to go.